Welcome to the 12th video on building a social network with Go. Time to start adding notifications. But before that, I will change the Postgres driver we currently use to support arrays. I need to change the driver name here. Also, update how we checked for the SQL error codes here. That's it. Now, let's go to the database schema and create the notifications table. I want to display grouped notifications, but I don't want to use group by. That's why I'm using an array directly here. The users creating the notifications will be grouped at the moment when the notification is issued. Now, let's move to our back-end service. Start by defining the notification struct. Same as the table. Here are some examples of what I want for notifications. You get it. A basic notification. I will use the username of the users directly in the actors array. In this video we will notify about new followers. This function will be called from a GoRoutine, so I will log errors directly here instead of returning any. We will do all the work inside a transaction. First, I want to translate the follower ID as the actor username. Following someone will be a toggle button. I don't want to spam with notifications, so we will end it if a notification with the actor on it already exists. These three colons are for typecasting. I know it will throw an error without it. Now, I will try to find an unread notification to add the actor to it.
In case no notification was found, we will just insert a new one. This is the array feature I needed. That's why I changed the driver. In the case the notification was found, we will update it to add the actor and timestamp. Finally, don't forget to commit. That should be. Now, let's add a method to retrieve notifications. These are the authenticated user notifications, in descending order and with backward pagination. Let's start by checking auth. Once again, I will build a dynamic query. And that should do it.
Before moving to the HTTP handler, I will code the methods to mark notifications as read right now. They are short enough. First, I check for authentication. Then, I simply do the update on the database. Actually, I don't want to use the request context here. I want to mark the notification as read, no matter what. So, the background context will do. This method here, is to mark all notifications as read. Done. Now, let's code those HTTP handlers. The pagination arguments come from the query string. Let just call our method with those. Handle the errors correspondingly. and respond back. Here, the notification ID comes from the URL path. This time, we respond with a 204 no content. And the last handler, is almost the same. Yeah. Done. Let's start CockroachDB, run the schema and build to test it. I will log in as Jane, to follow John. Then, log in as John to see my notifications. And there it is. Jane just followed me. I will do the same with another test user. See, the actors were grouped together.
Now I will mark this notification as read. And do the same with another test user. This time, the notification wasn't grouped because the old one was already read. Since I have more than one result, let me quickly test the pagination. All looks good. That's all for this video. See you in the next.